That's right, folks. Paradise Island, the island of your dreams. to another Gaze Master where we're constantly in life-threatening situations. Why, every day I seem to fall into someone, feasible hazard or other, forcing the girls to drop everything and apply urgent mouth-to-mouth. -mouth. This can prevent them from telling what's in today's show. TFI's Catalina takes control of a large hose in Roscoe McQueen. But first we begin with an event we call Oi Raptor, Bring Back My Leg. <laughs> Arcade machines are always spectacular, but the sheer eye-popping excitement, Sega's Lost World takes the biscuit. The two-player version of the game involves an exhausting journey through four stages of non-stop action as wave upon wave of prehistoric tests attempt to rip you to shreds. For this challenge, a team of two Lost World experts will attempt to demonstrate their skills by playing through the entire game using a single credit each. One credit equals four lives, and I suspect they'll need every one of them if they're to deal with this dinosaur deluge. It's a tough one. Good luck. <laughs> right, for this challenge, we scoured the country for the best Lost World players, and it was a very generous scour. We came up with Oliver Kay and Tammy Sidey. <laughs> Welcome, Tammy. Yeah. Now, uh, all about the Lost World, a game about very, very scary animals. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about nice animals. Have you got any pets? Um, yeah, I've had uh, three gerbils so far. Uh -huh. uh, uh, my first one was called Chimney Sweep. Good. Good and uh, he got killed by a cat. Oh, no. Somehow, I don't know how, but the cage got open, the gerbil got out. Was it really upsetting? Yeah, it was, I had to bury him, and yeah. it was just a bit upsetting. Well, you'll find all of her throughout life. There's a lot of dead gerbils. Uh, yeah. Tammy, uh, the reason you and Oliver are so good at this game is because of teamwork. You just get on, you just like each other. Is there anyone you don't like? Yeah, Miss Collins, my science teacher. What, she, what don't you like about her? She's very boring. Everyone falls asleep in a lesson. <laughs> Does she not notice? Um, no, she's too busy talking. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, uh, Miss Collins, have you watched and sorted out? Uh, right, okay, then, uh, best of luck with the game. If you'd like to uh, take your positions yeah. over by it, I'll go up to the comedy box. Previously on the show, he's got through the whole of Virtua Cop without losing a life. He's also played two machines of Virtua Cop 2 at the same time. He is the arcade shooting game legend Martin Mathers, and he joins us now. Welcome, Martin. Thank you very much. Now, since you were on the show last year, what have you been up to? Oh, I've been, I've been doing a lot of things, but mostly it involves a large intake of alcohol because I've been a student. So. Right. Nothing Not wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Because it's mostly my tax that uh, gets get spent on that. Uh, yes. Now, Martin, you are the undisputed king of this type of game. If you had to think of one attribute that's important, what, what would it be? I'd say it's probably teamwork. You've got to work together, look out for your other person, you know, pick people off. Um, also, a clean pair of pants. Might help. Oh, always useful. Uh, right, OK, best of luck, Tammy. Best of luck, Oliver. You have got four lives to complete the whole of Lost World. Off you go. OK, I forgot to stage one, at the law of the jungle. It's quite easy here. It starts off very, very easy driving along. Just basically keep your eyes open. Watch for people jumping out, because obviously since the first level, it's not going to be too taxing. 
Okay, here they come but now. We've been told they've got to say being this here. Here come the Raptors. Now they're going to come at all at different angles here, aren't they, Aunt Mark? Now Tammy's made a very good start, you see. She's got the right idea. She's picked up a power bar. Now if you pick up three of those in the row, you get an extra life. And the bottom screen, obviously that's going to help. Okay. It's very limited. Is it like the other games when they uh, run out of bullets, do they just shoot outside the screen to reload as well? They do they have to shoot outside. Uh, and then they can carry on shooting. Also, have different kinds of shots. You have trick shots. You have quick shots. Basically, depending on how you shoot the people. I mean, now we've got a sniper shot. We need to pick it off very accurately. Oliver's doing well now. He's picking up uh, a detector. Basically, it means he can find the two people at the end of the game, which is supposed to like that's the uh, the whole objective, I think. Okay, then it's a Raptor friends, and they're all coming out there very quickly. Someone say help. Who is that? That dinosaur's trying to win, but that's sure. That's a, a good, good job. job he's, got, he's got a superpower bar. That means he gets an extra life straight off, which is quite good because it's going to help. Now, it's certainly, well, that'll help with the chance because they've only got four lives, but it's put one of them up to five. But now we're going to take a short interruption from this to catch up with today's news. Last week's boat show in London saw top racing broke Nigel Mansell lured by a huge fee to endorse upcoming game Powerboat Racing. The title is due for a release on PlayStation and PC in late March. Unfortunately, <laughs> things went badly wrong for Nigel when he found himself sandwiched between Peter's Andre and Stringfellow, surely two of the biggest gits on the planet. Titanic, the most expensive movie in history, docks in cinemas everywhere on Friday. Most of the movie's whopping budget went on special effects produced by our friends at Digital Domain. When we went out to see them last series, they showed us a rough cut of the film and I said, it's great guys, but I think it'll be better if you make the ship sink. PC owners starved of originality will rejoice in March with the release of Heads. Featuring 220 different characters over 20 worlds, you basically roam around having scraps with other heads, and if you beat them, you collect their head with the weapon contained therein. With heads based on such varied folk as Muhammad Ali, Eric Cantona and Mystic Meg, it should come as no surprise that this game came from the warped imagination of our very own Kirk Hewing. Okay, uh, Oliver and Tammy are trying to play all the way through the Lost World before the end of the show using only four lives. When we last saw them, Oliver had just picked up an extra life, which was good news. The bad news is, during that little section there, he lost it again. Let's rejoin the action now, and if we take a look, we can see that they are halfway through the T-Rex boss attack, the end of stage one, chapter two. Mark, how tough is this? Basically, the idea was to hit the red spot on the face. Obviously, now, oh, Tammy's no, he's got, grabbing a, the one that Tammy's got a very on. bad problem now because she's been picked up in the mouth. She's got to stand the start back as fast as possible she's while done Oliver it. tries to pick off the spots on her face. She managed to do it. She didn't lose a life, which is good news for them. That's it. We can see the energy bar's totally gone from the T-Rex. That's it. That's the Guardian gone. So they're on to stage two, to stage two, chapter now. one. Be down by the lake side, which is obviously, it's a little bit more difficult now because it's starting to move a bit faster. You've got to pick off a few more things. There's going to be a Brachiosaur at the start, which they've got to pick off. Be a bit of a pain in the neck because it's a bit of a bad band. Here he is. He's going to rear up in a second. But they're nice dinosaurs. Well, they're supposed to be. They're supposed to be vegetarians, but no, I don't think it works that way because, in my experience, vegetarians are not nice people. Very good point there, Martin. Okay, is it the same deal with the circles here? You've got to yeah, try you've to pick off the here? circles because if you don't pick them off before they go red, it's going to land on you. And that can okay. hurt. It's going to leave a nasty <laughs> scar. <laughs> and a very nasty chip in there. Now, top tail in the way action here. Is it the same deal with the circles? It's another deal. They basically got to avoid anything. Anything with red circles on is a shoot, otherwise they're going to die. Okay, then we're going to leave them in the middle of that Brachiosaurus there. They're in the middle of it. Uh, stage two, chapter one, which in old money means it's time for today's celebrity challenge. I've enlisted Roscoe McQueen on the PlayStation to demonstrate the horrors of life in today's emergency surfaces. Taking on the role of an intrepid firefighter, my contestant was clear three rooms of fires started by a gaggle of dastardly robots. My contestant was given ever watch rely on his temperature gauge. If the level creeps too high, the challenge will come to an incendiary end. Now, once again on Games Master, the celebrity guest fits the challenge absolutely perfectly. She once watched the episode of London's Burning. Uh, please welcome the greatest thing in the history of TFI Friday, Catalina Girado. Welcome to the show, Catalina. What a graceful little walk that you have. It was. It was my ballet training. That was very, very nice. Thank now, you. it's a it's a first for us on Games Master. 
because uh, we have a guest that's got all levels and their levels which is oh, what levels did you get uh, oh god i forgot now history of art, art in english uh -huh. as well as these things you have also played violin at the Albert Hall? I have indeed. Solo or with a load of other blokes? I played, when I was 10 years old, I played in the orchestra at the school proms. And then when I was 12 year old, I played the solo, first violin solo for the Butt Double Violin Concerto. Do you still play? Occasionally, if I wanted to. I, you know, I, mean, I mean, you know, I've dabbled a bit. Would you like me to play with you? I oh, could. you could. You could. You could yeah. fiddle. I certainly could. <laughs> hey! Not going to top that one. So, uh, right, uh, at the moment we have got the Lost World Challenge going on. Martin Mathers is keeping an eye on that. Catalina is uh, about to play Roscoe McQueen. All of that coming up after this break. <laughs> Welcome back to Games Master. Two small children are being ripped apart by raptors in the space studio and we have parental permission to do it. That's Ollie and Tammy on a Lost World. Joining us as well is the lovely Catalina. She is about to attempt Roscoe McQueen. Helping me to describe the action is Mr. Rick Henderson. Rick, Hello. firemen, how much admiration do you have for them? To be honest, firemen are the heroes of the street. They really are. They're unsung a lot of the time. Do you think police Get all, grab all the headlines and firemen don't? They certainly do. It's all that nicking bloke stuff that they do, you know, whereas, you know, rescuing a cat out of a tree yeah. isn't so glamorous. But they really are the heroes of the street. Did you ever want to be a fireman when you were little? No, but I wanted a huge hose. <laughs> all right. Have you got any tips for Catalina and Roscoe McQueen? At the beginning of the level, we see the robots, they will start fires. If she doesn't get the robots killed before she starts putting out the fires, then they will set subsequent new fires. She doesn't want to do that. No, she doesn't. Because uh, Catalina has two and a half minutes to clear up all the fires within the building. If it gets too hot, the place will blow up anyway. We're underneath it, two and a half minutes. We would like to wish her the very best of luck for this. Catalina, you have two and a half minutes, and your time begins now. OK, now these are robots, first of all, that you were talking about. Rick, she wants to destroy them sharpish. Yeah, she wants to kill all these robots with the axe and uh, just basically get them out of the way so she can concentrate on the fires. There's fires going on all around, Rick, but should she be putting them out now? No, she shouldn't be putting them out because these robots will start subsequently new fires. She doesn't want that to happen. OK, that's it. She has uh, successfully killed all the robots. 20 seconds gone now. She's chasing the axe to the hose. And putting out the fires in the top left hand corner of the screen, you can see a water carrier. When that gets empty, she's got no more water, she's so going to have to find out where she can get some more. But it's a decent enough start, Rick. It's a decent enough start, and also in the top, top right of the screen, you can see there's a centigrade meter. As that gets hotter, the room will explode. She doesn't want that to happen either. OK, now she's run out of water, she's got to find some more. Luckily, there's some hidden in these little lockers there alongside the sweaty jog straps. She's got there, she's picked up some more water. You can see a water bottle replenishing, two more fires to put out in there, Rick. How does she vary the angle of her hose? Well, that's absolutely automatic. It's a bit like real life. It will rise and lower when you least expect it. <laughs> OK. Catelyn has been going for a minute. She has almost cleared all of the fires in this first room. Just one more to go. But remember, there's a couple more rooms after this, so she needs to get and move on. Come on, Catelyn. She took a little bit of a hit there. You can see the guy in the top right corner of the screen, the face. When that disappears, her challenge will be over, but hopefully it won't get that far. Right, first room cleared. Door open. Two more rooms now, Rick. Yeah, she's got to actually get into the next room, but she's not going into the right room. That is the wrong room. She's really? wasting was valuable time. She can't get into that room yet. There's something else that must be done. That looks like a robot. What's that robot doing? That's a bizarre it's... French made robot <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> OK, now what's she done here now? Is this some kind of electricity box here, Rick? The electricity box will open up that other locked door. She should get some more water at this point because, as you can see, her water bottle at the top is actually running out. Well, I hope she's got the time to do it because she's only got about 43 seconds left to do the challenge. Carolina, she's gone the water. You don't need any more, love. Sort it out. Let's go to the next room, okay? That dog out now. There's more robots, there's more fire, Rick. Yeah, she's got to kill these two robots. There's a big raging fire over in the corner that she's going to have to put out. She really has some gas skates on here. She does. She's only got about 23, 22 seconds left. Come on, Carolina. Grab your horse and douse those flames. It's getting hot in there as well. It's as hot as my underpants. I'm seeing Catalina, basically. She's nearly done it. Sorry, it's not the last fire. Say, she's now going to get out the level. She's got about 10 seconds left. Whoop that rack. big red thing with your axe. Whoop the red thing, Catalina. Five seconds left. That's it. She's going to be down to five seconds to spell. Catalina. That was all very exciting there. Uh, because I thought you had plenty of time that you were going to do it, but then it kind of... It stumbled a bit towards the end. 
I can't remember. Just I was just toying. too excited. Yeah. Just toying. I was, yeah. And uh, the robot guys at the start, there was did not seem to be a problem with them. They were all right, were they? No, they were a bit icky, really. They didn't uh -huh. like me very much. And they were getting, getting running away, and it was kind of a bit of time wasting there. Handling that extremely large hose was was that was that, that a problem? That was the most exciting part, actually. Mm. Yeah. Do you think you could top that innuendo? Well, I slid down a fireman's pole the other day. Yes, slid down a fireman's pole! And on that bombshell, let's reward the guest master going to Joy Sing 2! Today's special guest, Catalina! <laughs> So, uh, while Donnick cops off yet another fantastically attractive uh, lady, it's worth reminding you, we have something else going on <laughs> today. Young Tammy and uh, Ollie have been given the duration of the show to get through the whole of the Lost World using only four lives. The king of the arcade cheer ups Martin Mathers, has been lending his watchful guest to the proceedings. Martin, uh, how's it going? Basically, it's not been going too well. They've been playing a bit like the England cricket team. They're both down to two lives. They've lost two now. Let's see how it went. Let's go back to the replays. Starts off here in stage two, chapter one. They started picking off the man. Basically, they did a good job rescuing him. He threw them a couple of things. That was a good thing. But then Oliver lost it. He totally sidetracked. He was going to the right. He had the shotgun. He should have picked him off. He had infinite ammo. He should have done it. And then Tammy did exactly the same as she got nailed by the Velociraptor. That was not good news for them. Moving on now to the boss of stage two with a name I'm not even going to try and pronounce because I don't do that sort of thing. It's a very easy boss. I don't know why they did it. Basically, it swims around a lot. A couple of red circles in the mouth. It's pretty easy. But basically, they just weren't watching. They weren't doing it properly. And it managed to nail one of them. And that was not good news because, obviously, they need all the lives they can get on this game. But finally, they managed to beat the boss. They moved on to stage three. And this was the time when Tammy decided to get a right kicking from one of the Velociraptors. Basically, they started off doing very well. Tommy did an excellent bit of saving there, saved the man, got himself a lightning gun, which is a top weapon. But then once again, he's just too slow. He's not doing his teamwork like he should. He wasn't watching, and Tammy got it right in the mush. Just blatantly evil shot there from the Velociraptor, and it wasn't good. It just wasn't good. And here we can see Oliver's still got 20 seconds left on his lightning gun, but it's Tammy that takes the shot. Oliver should have picked him off with a lightning gun. It was a bad shot. They shouldn't have lost that life. OK, we rejoin the action live now. They're in the stage three, chapter two. And uh, a, bit of a bit of exact shooting required here, Mark. Yep, they need to do a task here. They've got to shoot the grappling hook into the tower so they can Fantastic get across the tower. Fantastic work there. They've got it now. They're sliding across the rope. But it's their path's well. going to be blocked now. There's going to be a couple of pterodactyls coming in. There are other tasks you've got to do in the game, such as saving like, one of those triceratops things from the raptors or shooting the code for the combination to get into the like, laboratory. But, I mean, that's one of the easy ones. I mean, this is going to be... It should be pretty plain sailing from here. I mean, all they've got to do is get to the end of the level. I mean, they should be able to take on the T-Rex, no problem. OK, but they are moving very, very fast, those pterodactyls. They're going to be a bit tired as well, Martin. They've I would have thought so. Show. Their fingers would have been wearing out. I mean, I should know this from playing Virtual Cop. You know, once you get towards the end of a game, you know, you start to lag, your shots start to slow down. OK, so they get to a very, very tense part of the challenge now, but we're going to tease you. We're going to ask you to hold off a little bit while we check out today's reviews. Do you find yourself looking jealously at people with decent gaming machines? Then you must be a Saturn owner. Don't worry, though, you've now got your very own Final Fantasy VII in the shape of Panzer Dragoon Saga. Panzer Dragoon RPG is an exceptionally good game. All right, it's not Final Fantasy VII. All right, it's not Zelda. But fair play, it's a good attempt all round. Yeah, the original was one of the most cinematic games ever to grace the Saturn. And it was only a matter of time before somebody came up with an adventure version. And this is really rather good. Panzer Dragoon RPG employs a classic Japanese RPG device, which basically means your character knows nothing about himself, his history, or his powers at the beginning of the story. The cutscenes are just so impressive and so emotive that um, you can't help but sit there and be instantly addicted and amazed. Even though it's something that the Japanese have a reputation for, it's difficult to tell a story well on a computer. This is done brilliantly. The cutscenes blend seamlessly with the action, and you really do feel very involved. So now, if you've got a Saturn right now, I mean, there aren't very many games out there to choose from. You might have steep slope sliders, which is all right. You might have this, that, or the other. The only game worth actually buying at the moment, in my opinion, would be Panzer Dragoon RPG. No two ways about it. Postal on the PC is one of a number of recent games that deliberately sets out simply to shock. It's a very childish thing to do and something we at Games Master would never consider. 
Okay, so the very thin plot here is basically you, you wake up in the morning one day and the whole entire town is trying to kill you. Um, so what do you do? You uh, go postal, which apparently is to lose your mind, pick up a shotgun and run around killing things. The gameplay is actually quite engrossing in the sense you do actually feel like you're trapped in this town with people trying to kill you on all sides. It's very violent, but at least it's convincing. At the moment, there's raging controversy about the issues of censorship and the nature and content of video games out there. There's stuff happening in Parliament at the moment being discussed. And what do they do? They bring out Postal, possibly one of the sickest and brutal games that I have ever actually come across. Having said that, the one thing it has got going for it is it's actually addictive and playable. There's no denying that Postal is a very playable game. But unfortunately, it's entirely been made on the assumption that all PC gamers are antisocial, obnoxious little twerps who just want to kill people. Well, are you? Disaster has struck during that piece of finely crafted television sweet meal there. Tammy and Oliver have both lost a life. They've only got one life left each. They've still got to finish the game before the end of the show. And they're halfway through the big final boss here. He's a big fella, Martin. What's the tactics here? He's a bit of a big lad. Basically, it's the same as normal, shooting the dots. What was that? He's going to be He throws cars at you and he throws bits of buildings at you, which isn't good. And this What's is that? a bad move as well because he's going to start eating the people. Now, you can't save them, but when he eats someone, his life's going to go up, and that is not good. Oh, yes. Hit we can see the energy bar at the top of the screen underneath T-Rex Mail. It did jump up a bit there, but it's going down. Can you hit him when there's not a circle there? You can't hit him when there's no circles. There's no point wasting bullets. Wasting oh, no, things. he's got one. And Oliver's lost it. He's gone up. He's got to press the start button as fast as possible. Press that button. Oh, he's done oh, it. Yes, he he's hasn't done it. lost the life. Now, if that happens again, one of them loses the life, and that'll be it. The challenge will be over. It won't be good. No, we don't want that. They've both just got one. Now, Tammy's, Tammy's, up. Tammy's well. got to push the Tammy's start button, Tammy. Press the start button. Get out of his jaws! And she's done it. She's out. She's, she's out. out. It's OK. We can look at the bar. The energy bar's gone down quite far. They're nearly there, Mark. It's nearly there. We nearly got him. But the... Oh, and he's done oh, it no, again. Oliver's gone. Oliver's gone. Oliver's gone. Go on, Oliver. His press jaws are too enticing. Oh, Get see. back in the car now, Oliver. Keep firing. They obviously know what they're doing because they're pressing that button fast. And now they get the shots in. Yes. And now Tammy's lost it again. What? You're not supposed to jump in his mouth, kids! He's obviously got the wrong idea, she's playing the wrong game here. She certainly is, but there's only a tiny it's still left on that shot, energy bar. He's, off, see, he's disappeared. Where's he going? He's had enough. Come back, it mate! It could be the end of the game, I think he's had enough. He's done a run-off. He's gone for retirement now. Where's he gone? Oh no, we could be up for a tense moment here. It's too it's, it's quiet. Too quiet. But oh, there here he goes! Is. Now he's just got one shot left and coming. You can't miss the target that side. It's easy, That's and it's it. all over. Right in the gob! The T-Rex bites the dust there. That means that Tammy and Oliver have tongue to challenge. Well done there, Ollie. Well done, Tammy. So, right, Tammy, first of all, we, we gave you four lives to complete that and you both had one life left. Were you worried at any point? Um, yeah, I think it was when um, <clears throat> we were on the motorbikes and the dinosaurs kept jumping out of the bushes. That was yeah. quite scary. Um, now, Oliver, what about you at the end, that big Tyrannosaurus Rex? Things looked a bit hairy there. I uh, wasn't worried, really. It was fairly obvious where it was coming out from, so yeah. it was just pretty easy, really. Is, is there anything in life that worries you at all? No. Ever expanding stomach? Because that worries me. Uh, no, because it's your problem, really. Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, cheeky young whippersnapper. <laughs> uh, OK, it was a fantastic display of games. They won the best you've ever seen on Games Master, and for that, the golden joystick goes to Oliver and Tammy! <laughs> OK, uh, that's it then uh, for today. Only two more shows to go. Two more weeks then until the TV listings pages become emptier than a fat, smelly bloke's bed. Ta-da! <laughs> Games Master magazine is available from the usual shops, price $2.75. Next on 4, take a leaf out of Tim's book in Home Improvement.